Hello students, today we are going to talk about gibberellins. We will discuss their discovery, structure and biosynthesis. Gibberellin, commonly abbreviated to GA, is a plant hormone stimulating plant growth and development. Gibberellins are a class of tetracyclic diterpenoid compound that share a tetracyclic 6565 hydrocarbon skeleton. Currently, more than 125 different gibberellins have been identified from higher plants, fungi, or bacteria. GA1 and GA4 are the most common endogenous GA growth regulators. GA's function include promotion of organ growth through stimulation of cell elongation and cell division and activation of developmental switches such as between C dormancy and germination, juvenile and adult growth phases and vegetative and reproductive development. Discovery of gibberellins. Gibberellins were discovered in Japan early in 20th century as a causative agent for the overgrowth symptoms in rice plants suffering from the Bekene disease. Bekene means silly seedling disease. The disease was shown to be due to the infection with the phytopathogenic fungus Gibrella fusicori, now reclassified as Fusarium fusicori, right? From which an active principle was extracted that reproduced the Bekene symptoms when applied to rice plants. The term gibberellin was first used in 1935 by Tezero Zabuta for this active substance, from which two crystalline solids named gibberellin A and gibberellin B were eventually obtained. Both gibberellin A and B were subsequently shown to be impure and three compounds named gibberellin A1, A2 and A3 were separated from gibberellin A. The composition of gibberellin B is unclear. Next is structure of gibberellins. Gibberellins are all cyclic diterpenes with an ant gibberellin ring structure. This is ant gibberellin ring structure. They contain either 20 or 19 carbon atoms. The C20 gibberellins, for example, GA12, this compound, which have the full complement of 20 carbons, are precursors of the C19 gibberellins, right? The C20 gibberellins do not have bioactivity per se, although there are a large number of C19 gibberellins, and many of these do not have all the uh, structural requirements for bioactivity. Structural requirements include the presence of a three beta hydroxyl group and uh, absence of a two beta substrate, right? Of the C19 gibberellins that fulfill these criteria, just look at this diagram GA1, GA3, GA4, and GA7 are the most active forms. Means biologically active gibberellins in the higher plants are C19 compounds. Occurrence in plants Gibberellins are in gymnosperms, ferns, and lower vascular plants like xylotum and lycopodium. Among fungi, Besides Gibrella, they are known from Sveciolomma manihoticola. Uh, this is an other ascomycete which causes the super elongation disease of manihot, means cassava, and also from Fusiferia species, right? The number of Gibrellins is phenomenal. Uh, as a recent count, as I already told you, 125 Gibrellins are known and the numbers are still increasing. Although the number of naturally occurring gibberellins is large, the number of gibberellins that are biologically active is quite small. For example, only GA1, GA3, GA4, and GA7 are some biologically active uh, gibberellins. Next is biosynthesis of gibberellins. Gibberellins biosynthesis pathway residing in three different cellular compartments. These three different cellular compartments are plastids. This is plastid, endoplasmic reticulum, and 
cytoplasm, right? Gibberellin biosynthesis pathway has three different classes of enzymes. First is terpene cyclases. Second is cytochrome P450 monoxygenases. And third one is two oxoglutarate dependent dioxygenases. First, xeranyl xeranyl diphosphate compound, GGDP. It is a common precursor for diterpenes and carotenoids. And you know, gibberellin is a diterpene, right? To initiate gibberellin biosynthesis, this, just look at this diagram. This GGDP is converted to a tetracyclic hydrocarbon and curine by two terpene cyclases enzymes, CPS and KS. CPS, copyl diphosphate synthase and anticurine synthase, KS, right? These enzymes are located in plastids. In the second stage of the pathway, this anticurine is oxidized to GA12 aldehyde by cytochrome P450 monooxygenases, uh, which are associated with endoplasmic reticulum. First, this anticurine is converted to anticurinone, then anticurinol, next anticurinoic acid, which is converted to N 7 alpha hydroxy curinoic uh, acid and ultimately GA12 aldehyde. In the final stage of this pathway, this GA12 aldehyde is converted to bioactive gibberellins, these all, right, by two oxoglutarate dependent dioxygenases, which may be cytosolic enzymes, right? These include GA7 oxidase, this one, GA20 oxidase, GA3 beta hydroxylase, and GA2 oxidase. With the help of all these en enzymes, GA12 aldehyde is converted to different bioactive uh, gibberellins. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more. Thank you.